Okay, we're ready for action. So we're gonna go out of the compressor into the coalescing filter, then into the um, organic sieve, the um, desiccant filter, and then that's gonna go into the tank. Now, if you don't have that, you just go right from one to the other. You're gonna be going right out of your, I'll call the cigarette filter, right into your um, paintball tank or your scuba tank. But I'm gonna have a little extra prevention. Um, you wanna be sure you check all these um, fittings, by the way and uh, make sure that they are tight. Some of the things you get from these companies you buy it from, um, not so much, they're not always tight. And then as you start assembling these things, you've also got that. So make sure that it's 100% in, not just 50% of the way, and you don't want it to fly apart with um, three, 4,000 PSI and have that be whipping around and um, smack you. So, okay, we've got water running through it. We've got our oil in the system. Um, I've got a good source of power. Um, I'm going through the watt meter there. We can check that. Um, initially, I'm going to have my tanks closed. I'm going to have my bleed valves open. Is the way I like to do that. We're going to be able to take a look at some temperatures um, using the um, laser as we do it. So um, let's go ahead and fire it up now. If it turns out that we hear nothing but the winding smells, then we may want to stop and not do it anymore. But in this case, I did try it um, about a week ago and it seemed like it went fine. So let's go ahead and give it a go. Okay, it stalled for just a second. I was kind of worried, but then it started up. I'm gonna check and see what the wattage is and what the current. 1,350 watts. Okay, I'm going to shut off the bleed valves. Watch the pressure start to come up. One thousand psi. Well, at least over here on the head, it's thirty-four degrees centigrade. And the water temperature is still about fifty-five degrees Fahrenheit. Up to 1,500 PSI. Now, mind you, I'm only charging up this system here. I haven't opened up the tank. I'm not going to do that until the pressure equalizes. 2,000 PSI. You see the temperature rising over here on the young hand, it's coming right off of this head. Up to about 2,500 PSI. Over here, it's about 3,300. Three thousand PSI. Temperature is forty degrees centigrade. Thirty-one hundred. Thirty-two hundred. Thirty-three hundred. That's pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and start opening up. You can hear it. Okay, it's equalized. Got about 3,400 PSI. Let's check some temperatures. First of all, the back of our hand, this is gonna be hot. It's getting hot. I wouldn't wanna grab it. The 
down in the piston it's 48 centigrade. Up here where it should be maybe even hotter, 53 degrees centigrade. Over at the detector it says it's 46 degrees centigrade. We can see our water is doing just fine. Still got ice left. And the water temperature is 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Up to 47 degrees centigrade. And our pressure is 36, 3700 PSI. By the way, the gauge over here does not read in PSI. This reads in um, bars. And it says it's about 250. So how do we do a conversion? 1.5 so um, half of 25 is 12, 12 at 25 is 37, so it's about 3,700 there. It says it's about 38 at the compressor, so it's shoving air through the coalescing filter and then through the organic sieve, that's the desiccant filter with the charcoal in it, coming out of it going into the tank. So far, so good. Our wattage right now, it says we're up to 1,895 watts. So if you don't have a 20 amp breaker in your house, good luck with that. 16.7 amps. Like it's almost 4,000 PSI. The temperature is 50 degrees centigrade. Let's take a look at our temperatures actually on the unit itself. Fifty-eight degrees centigrade on the first stage of the piston. Sixty-two degrees centigrade is we're exiting the second stage of the piston, so it's pretty damn warm up there. Over here, it says it's only fifty-one and a half degrees centigrade. And how are we doing on our pressure? Well, it's about 4,000 PSI. I'd say that's pretty good. And it's about 26, 27 on the bars. So that gives us about 3,900. So okay, how are we going to shut it down? Turn off the power? No, not me. I'm going to bleed a little bit. And after I do the bleed valve, and oh, by the way, it's not a bad idea to open up your sieve every once in a while. I don't see any water coming out of that one. How about on our young head? Nothing there. Ah, uh, I got a little spurt of water there. Just a little bit, not bad. So okay, we're going to go ahead and shut it down. I'm going to be ready to shut this off, even though I don't need to because I've got the one-way valve. But I'm going to do it for your sake because you may not have 
the one-way valve here. So I'm going to open up a little bit. Open up a little bit. Close it off. And shut it down. Now, I lost quite a bit of pressure there, didn't I? Because, yeah, it was in these two units. And they were, um, hopefully, filtering all of the water and oil that might otherwise have been in here. Are they warm? Um, not too bad. Let's take a look at the temperature check. 15 degrees centigrade. No, they're nice and cool. How about my tank? Um. Also 15.9 degrees centigrade. Temperature here. Drop down to 25 on the um, second stage. Still 55 on the piston. Um, it is a good idea to let it maybe run another minute. Now I had, as you know, opened my valves up there to let it run a little bit without. And that's a good idea just to kind of let it run a little bit. You don't want it to be where you still got the heat, you shut it down, and it's got nowhere to go. It just gets a little bit warmer. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and take care of that. So um, um, all of a sudden the temperature here is dropped down to 28. Um, our ice is um, that, you know, I had those ice cubes. Now, mind you, it's only 60 degrees out here in the garage. So I've still got most of my ice. So... That's all well and good, but um, it's kind of um, luke, lukewarm now coming out. So as you would expect, because it's going through, um, and I didn't mention this, but that second stage of the piston, um, in addition to being, you know, a size of about a pencil, um, in this area up here, it's got like, um, on the outside of it, it's got a... Um, a radiator assembly there. So it's got some fins that are coming out on both sides and that's what the water is circulating. There is a, a tube there so the air is going through the piston and it's got a little opening there in the top where the air is going through. That little baby is working hard to get a lot of pressure for us for a very reasonable price. So is there anything else to close with? Oh, a couple of the safety things I probably should have mentioned is that um, you don't want water or things to get on the inside of these metal assemblies. You know, this, although it's a carbon fiber tank, I guess it does have an aluminum on the inside. You don't want water to get around these things. So you do want to, as much as possible, keep water out. I see people make the mistake of putting their um, filters and things lower than the pump. You want to keep them up higher. You want to keep them vertical. If they're sideways, they're just not going to do anything. They're meant to be operated in a vertical plane to be um, working. So don't put them on the side or you're not getting any benefit of, of them all. You might as well just bypass them and not go through them. Um, oil. You know, do not put oil around your fittings. Teflon tape, sure, if it calls for it. Um, but don't use oil. Oil and air do not mix and can cause explosions. That would not be any fun. Oh, if you do have some leaks, you normally can feel with your fingers and see where it's at. If you're not getting pressure in your tank, you're only getting a, a small amount that's coming out of your um, compressor, then you might check and feel around. Um, I would also say is, you know, get yourself some water, soapy water, and give some squirts, make generous squirts, and you'll see the bubbles start to come, and you'll know exactly where you need to work if you don't have a good tight fit. But obviously... To be able to get, if you want 4,000 PSI, you've got to have a, a tight closed loop system. Well, one thing I didn't mention was about the burst valves. There is some explosion proof valves on it there. So if you do for some reason get it over 4,500 PSI, who knows? Maybe your gauge isn't even working right. You think it's not 4,500. You don't have two places to check it and the gauge isn't working and it gets too high. You wouldn't want the system to destroy itself and blow up. <laughs> I'll have some videos there to kind of talk about what happens when pressures get too high. So if you do have some problems, 
Now you don't have pressure. Check your burst valves. Maybe you got the pressure too high when you're horsing around and uh, they need to be replaced. There are some extras that come with it. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you like it, be sure to like the video. Um, go ahead and share with your friends and subscribe if you want to see more of these. Um, we'll probably have a couple more things on advanced tips, tricks, and traps on how to do the best job. If you only have um, the compressor and the tank, don't feel bad. Uh, I will say is that be sure, though, is that keep the um, filter above your young hand. Do a bleed valve from time to time, maybe every five minutes. You might get a little bit of water. You'd rather have it there than go there. But you want water not to be going uphill. You don't want it to put lower and your tank down even lower. You want it to have things be going uphill to uh, minimize your chance to go there. And when you get through, um, like I said, be sure that you've let the air off your system. And I don't know if I can do this with my hands. Okay, let's take a look and see what we've got here. Sure enough, there is a little bit of oil that it caught, uh, but not really all that appreciable. I wouldn't say that it's very wet. Let's, well, maybe get a little bit there. I'm squeezing it. You see that? The water that's coming off in my hand? Not too bad. It's got maybe about three drops. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of this one. We can see that uh, what oil was there. I don't think it got into the system. There may be some vapors that went into the second stage, but uh, I think that this is good insurance. But if you do a good job replacing these filters, be sure to have a lot of them on hand and uh, replace the filter, and um, you should be good to go and be ready for some more paintballing. How you doing, brother? Oh, well, I'm good. Just trying to fight the fight the pain. The fact that he didn't know it was an MR artery. Uh, yeah. Is that good? Yeah. No, that's are you ready? Okay, let's take a look at the. That's where it went in. And back there's where it come out. Compression of gas represents a tremendous amount of stored energy. If the outlet valve is broken off. The sudden release of compressed gas can turn the cylinder into a missile with energy to shoot through a cinder block wall. I was ready to see this as not possible. I was totally expecting it not to actually work because it's one of those apocryphal tales and everyone we talked to had heard the story but no one knew anybody that it happened to. This video is capturing my grandfather about four feet away from an air compressor that exploded. Basically, the tank looks old, throw it away. These tanks rust from the inside out. The other thing is, never ever have these beads come in contact with the aluminum surface. The reason is, these beads leach acid once they get moist. At that point, you now have acid touching the metal pressure vessel. And that won't take long, or I won't say how long it'll take, but that can eventually weaken the threads in the uh, pressure vessel. Not a good thing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the show. I will see you on the flip side. Peace out. Bye for now.